Hey guys, welcome back to Indoor Reef. It has not been a good week. This week I'm going to talk to you about my sulking corals because of an alk swing. Right guys, so my video this week is quite a come down from my video last week where I was adding new corals to my reef tank. Uh, one of which I'd wanted for quite a long time. I've been keeping the Nano Reef here behind me for almost two years and over the last month it's been looking really brilliant and I mean I've been so pleased with how well it's going but this week things have really changed. Obviously tanks can have ups and downs but to be honest I really didn't expect it now especially this early into just starting this channel. Um, yeah I guess I really just didn't see this coming. Before I go into what happened and the impact on my tank, when you're watching this, if you've had something similar happen before or if you can relate to what's happening to me at the moment, maybe you've got some tips, please leave a comment. Um, you know, I'm going to read them all. I'm going to try and respond to everything. It just, yeah, I mean, I really appreciate the thoughts from you guys. There's a lot of you out there got a lot more experience than me. If you enjoy this video and want to see more like it, please check out the other videos on my channel and subscribe now. Um, this will make sure that you don't miss uh, new videos as they're released. So now what I'm going to do is give you a bit of a tour of the tank and show you the impact that this Alp swing has had on my corals. The damage as you'd expect has been very much focused on my SPS corals so it's maybe a little bit hard to see to be honest here. Previously there were not these kind of um, gaps between the polyps, the polyps were fully extended but now you can almost see this white underneath the polyps and this was never there before. There may be not the right term but it's kind of bleaching out a little bit. Over the last few days, over the last week as I've taken some um, measures which I'll talk about in a minute, it's really starting to come back. You can see my Montipora forest fire up here has taken quite a hit, so there really aren't so many polyps open on here at the moment. This is closed. My new Montipora Hasuta, which I was so excited to get last week, I think this came in right at the top of the Alk swing. Yeah, I, I honestly don't know if this is going to make it through this one. You can see it's starting to go a little bit brown, it's turning white. This is not looking good, I think. Up here, we've got a very similar story um, with my green Montipora. So uh, the branching Montiporas seem to have been hit hardest by this. Hopefully from this angle, you can see the polyps on the bottom are actually still doing really well. So it really is just the branching elements. Again, the plate in Montipora behind seems to be doing quite well there. So not all of my corals have been affected equally. The softies and LPS seem to be doing uh, very well still. So if we go down here and look at some of the small zoa colonies I've got, you can see these are still very open, colors are great. To be honest, I'd say these are actually still thriving. My Aiken here is, is still looking puffy, it's still looking great. And the same over here for my torch, so another LPS. I'd say largely the softies and the LPS in the tank haven't really been affected. Some of my newer, smaller Zoa frags have been a little bit affected by this, so they may be closed up a little bit, but over the last week they've started to open up again. I'm not entirely sure how this alk swing happened. I've been uh, dosing alkalinity in this tank for the last six months or so, and everything's been super stable. I normally try and keep this around 10.5 degrees carbonate hardness. Yeah, everything had been really good with this. What has changed is my calcium dosing. So previously, until about two weeks ago, I'd been dosing this manually, and I'd normally aim to keep it around 430. My auto doser has the capability to dose three different liquids, so I decided that and the plan always was to put calcium on here as well. So I moved to auto calcium dosing. With the new calcium dosing, I was having no trouble keeping calcium stable where I wanted it. And so I thought I was also keeping alkalinity stable. But what I had noticed is magnesium was climbing loads. I normally keep this about 1320 and I'd been noticing it going well over 1400 and it kept increasing, it was getting close to 1500. 
And at this point, I felt like something wasn't right. And I mean, I didn't realize at first, to be honest, there was actually uh, magnesium in the calcium supplement. So I wasn't putting any extra magnesium in. My understanding once I read up on it was that the magnesium supplement is meant to maintain magnesium not increase it. So what I did is I emailed the manufacturer, CCAM. So CCAM was super useful and explained why it was quite likely that I would be seeing a rise in magnesium at the moment, but actually um, it would settle down very soon. And it was a good thing in the long run. So CCAM were right. And the magnesium has come back down exactly where it should be and it's maintaining stable now, along with the calcium. So that's great. Now, what I don't know is if the ALK swing I saw was as a result of this rebalance at the same time, because I hadn't changed how I was dosing my alkalinity. So it would seem that there was some kind of rebalancing going on that was affecting it. So, yeah, I really don't know. If you, again, if you guys know, please shower up, let me know, because I'm a bit lost. I'm, I'm actually wondering about getting back in touch with CCAM and asking, but I mean, it's kind of happened now, so thing is I was so busy watching this magnesium and the calcium checking that they were stable that I wasn't looking at the alkalinity. I was testing magnesium much more frequently, I was testing calcium more frequently and I wasn't really checking the alkalinity because I'd never had a problem with this and I guess that was kind of naive. I should have been checking it um, because I know these three elements all interact with each other and I, I should have been more aware of that. So once I noticed um, the high alkalinity, the first thing I did was kind of count to 10 because I thought the worst thing I can do now is actually bring the alkalinity down too fast. So I reduced the dosing. So I normally dose like 13 milliliters uh, four times a day. So I reduced it down to 11 and this has just allowed it to drop maybe 0.3, 0.4 dkh a day. And this is kind of allowing me to bring the alkalinity down steadily and in, in a controlled way. And I'm now pretty much back down to the 10.5 that uh, that I'm trying to maintain. And the, the crazy thing is I'm probably going to have to put it pretty much back up to the 13 four times a day that I had, which actually caused the spike. And this is why I'm thinking it was probably something to do with this rebalancing and Previously, I'd always dosed the alkalinity from CCAM, but I'd been using the leftover calcium I had from uh, Red Sea. So maybe it was this mixing manufacturers. I know people often warn about mixing dosing from different things. Maybe the chemicals don't work together well. I'm not sure. I'm not a chemist, but I have a feeling this had probably something to do it. I mean, the situation I'm in mean, now with both set up on the auto dose, so they both CCAM, they're designed to work together. Um, the guy from CCAM confirmed that when he responded. So, you know, I think I'm set up right to continue now, but um, yeah, hopefully I don't suffer uh, too much loss as a result of um, this ALK swing. So I'm pretty sure the Montes will make it through. LPS, Zoas, Softies, they all look really great. I don't think I'm going to have a problem there, but some of the branching Monty Par, I'm not sure if these are going to make it through. If you think there's anything I can do to increase the chance of these branching Monty Par making it through, please leave a comment. Let me know. I'd really like to hear from you. Real shame that that uh, Montipora Suta Coral that I'd wanted for so long seems to be suffering the most but I guess it was new into the tank it was adapting to the flow and the lighting and everything else and so it was always going to be the bigger victim hopefully it makes it through um, oh, it's a real shame if it doesn't but I think now all I can do is try and keep things stable and just uh, give it time the other thing which had been going on a little bit before this ALK swing um, but never really been too much of a problem is I think I've got some dinoflagellates going on in the tank. Now these seem to be manageable. I think I'd let my phosphates and nitrates fall to almost zero and I suspect this is what's allowed them to flare up. I've now increased these to about 0.03 parts per million for the phosphate and closer to 20 parts per million for the nitrate. 
I'm blowing them off the corals and the rocks every chance I get, but I have no doubt that this is also not helping um, the branching SBS in particular at the moment because they're kind of wrapping around there. So, um, And I'm sure that's why um, they're kind of turning brown and you can see there's quite a lot of algae wrapped around them. All I can do at the moment is just try and keep things stable, keep it steady and just keep everything going. Like at the end of the day, you know, I, I might sound a bit melodramatic in this video because actually it, it, the, the tank isn't doing that bad um i guess i just know i'm at a turning point now where i've got to make sure i kind of keep everything stable and in control or it could go the wrong direction and we get really attached to our tanks don't we you know so um we want to see them as, as good as we can get them and when things take a little dip even if we know this kind of thing happens every now and again it, it, it feels a bit rough Again, if you've enjoyed this video, please like it, check out the other videos on my channel, subscribe, and that'll make sure you don't miss any new videos when they come out. Until next time on Indoor Reef, keep it stable, keep it fun, and keep reefing.